morning and welcome to St. George's and welcome to everyone who is joining us via live stream. We're certainly glad that you are all worshiping with us today. Um, just a couple of announcements to remind you. Um, first of all, we are so thrilled that at 530 today we will be experiencing even song for the first time in a really long time. So grateful for that opportunity. Um, 530 will be here in the nave and we encourage everyone who is looking forward to hearing beautiful music and just being able to bask and worship in that to join us for that. Also a reminder, please, 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 if you're planning to join us next Sunday for um, our birthday party at seven o'clock on the Garth, please make sure that you've made your reservation. Um, the exciting news is that our soprano section leader, se section leader Maria Fasciano and her husband will be two of the singers from Opera Memphis who will be joining us. And some of you may remember the, the wonderful concert that they presented for us here with Friends of Music before the pandemic started. Um, so we're looking forward to just a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, come early for the 5.30 service and you can go ahead and stake out your seat for seven and we'll be planning to have a wonderful time. Uh, no Sweat Soiree is underway. Please check out the No Sweat Soiree website um, to look for ways that you can go ahead and start your shopping. There's lots of wonderful stuff to purchase and we hope that you will be joining us in this great endeavor as we support our core community ministry partners, Church Health, Emanuel Center, MIFA, and Room in the Inn. This is our way of giving back to them and helping them do the ministry that they are called to do and we want to be able to support them well. So thank you in advance for shopping and for helping us as we uh, continue the work for them. And um, we are hoping to be able to, for our 1030 service, get some new crucifers and ultimately some new torch bearers. If you know somebody who's interested in doing that, then please let us know. Also, we've had an announcement for a few weeks now, but we're gonna continue to announce that if you're interested in serving as a limb or a lector at either the nine o'clock service or the 1030 service, please let us know that as well because we are welcoming new folks into those roles and would love to be able to visit with you and talk to you about how you can serve. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Worship the Lord in gladness, and come before the Lord's presence with song.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, let us speak the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. The Lord be with you. With you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. <clears throat> so David sent messengers to get her and she came to him and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept in the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. When they told David Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by, hand, by the hand of Uriah. In the letter, he wrote, set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. The word of the Lord. We will
we'll speak together the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord? See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force, to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. God, open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. And open our lives to the infinite possibilities born of your love. Amen. What is enough? When do we have enough? How can we convince ourselves that there is enough? The provocative questions around enough we find coming at us from two very different viewpoints in our Old Testament lesson and in our Gospel lesson today. Y'all knew I had to talk about David, didn't you? Can't miss that. So here is the great King David in our lesson from the second book of Samuel. The great King David who has everything. And lest we forget his story up to this point, he has many wives and many children. He has riches and wealth 
He is a known, valiant, trusted soldier and leader of soldiers who has been highly victorious leading his people into battle. And yet at the time that his people are out in battle, the king, this is why Israel wanted a king in the first place, please remember, to lead them into battle, the king is mysteriously not leading the people into battle. The king is resting at home while his people are out in battle. And while he is resting at home, he just happens to see the wife of one of his trusted soldiers bathing herself. The great king, who we just saw a couple weeks ago, dancing with all his might in front of the Lord and all of his people, celebrating the return of the Ark of the Covenant, the law of God, celebrating that coming back among the people, this keeper of the law. Let's see how many of those commandments we can break in one short little episode. Let's see, can we count them? So he sees another man's wife and he covets her. He sins for her and takes her, that's theft. He commits adultery with her. Well, that's another one of those commandments. Then to cover up his misdeed, he comes up with a grand lie and is going to send Uriah home so he can cover up what he's done. And then when Uriah, loyal and valiant himself, won't help him with his cover-up, well, then, yeah, there's that last one. I'm going to have to send you to die. So in one very short little episode, we have found the great King David breaking at least five of the commandments. Arguably, we can make that six, because that whole business about there's no other gods before me, well, yeah, the god of greed and selfishness and self-interest might be the god that is before his god. It's a horrid story about what it means to not perceive that we have enough. Because when we perceive that we don't have enough, then we are willing to do pretty much anything, no matter how much others are harmed or injured, because we perceive that we do not have enough. And there's just that one more thing that we need to go after. Now I want to contrast his response to the question of when is there ever enough to the disciples in John's Gospel. Jesus wanted them to get away for a deserted time. That didn't all work out. They are besieged by people everywhere they go. Everywhere they go. The sick are coming in throngs to them everywhere they go. Now Jesus has got 5,000 of them in front of him. 5,000 souls wanting to be taught, wanting to be nourished, wanting to be healed. And Jesus asks the disciples, how are we to feed them? There is not enough. There's not enough money. There's not enough in this one child's meal that is before us. And that is why I like John's account of this miracle more than I like anybody else's account of this miracle, because John actually identifies the person with the small meal as a child. So an even more insignificant person in their culture who produces a meal. Not enough of anything until it's in God's hands. And in God's hands, that which is not enough, that which is not sufficient, that which cannot possibly matter, in God's hands, 
becomes a tremendous, tremendous and sufficient bounty. Enough to feed 5,000 people with 12 baskets left over. In God's hands. And the disciples, who at this point in all of our Gospels have seen a whole lot of what Jesus can do, still, still are filled with doubt, still aren't sure what Jesus could do with the bread and the fish that were in his hands. They still weren't sure. And maybe sometimes we're not really sure what God can do with what we have either. In 1944, a Harvard scholar named Kurtley Mather penned a book called Enough. Now, notice the year that I said, 1944. There's a world war going on. There is scarcity and shortages, rationing. It seems like there's not enough of anything, and yet this Harvard scholar is penning a book, the premise of which is there is enough. If everyone cooperated and everyone shared and everyone did what we need to do to take care of everyone else, there is enough and there is enough to spare. But it's a mindset. It's a mindset for all of us to say there is more than enough. To not respond as David does with greed and self-interest and say, you know, there's never enough because there is one more wife I haven't claimed yet, so I'm going to go get her. Or to fall into a sea of doubt as the disciples did, to say, there's just not enough because there's just not enough. There's 5,000 people and there's just not enough. And not to believe what God can do with us and through us and with the gifts that we have been given. And so we stand as the receivers of these accounts. We stand as the receivers of these scriptures asking ourselves, how many times do we fall into one of these buckets or the other? How many times does our own self-interest get in our own way? How many times do we doubt God and doubt what God can do for us and for our world? And the call to us is to be able to see ourselves through our forebears wherever we may fall and to be able to say, our trust in God is enough. That is what is enough. It's enough for us to trust and believe that when we believe those commandments, when we believe that love of God and love of neighbor, when we believe that God's great gifts to us are more than sufficient, then we actually help bring God's kingdom to bear. We, in our own way, help make the world the place that God intended it to be by the small things, by the small gestures, by the small, tiny moments. When we refuse to fall prey to our own self-interest, and when we refuse to fall prey to our doubt, and when we believe that God's love for all humankind that is made in God's image and likeness surpasses everything else, we are the change makers. We are the change makers. We merely have to believe.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, throughout our lives, we hunger and thirst for you. We long for you. We look for you. Nothing in this world can fill us unless you come to us. Lord, we will perish. We will sink amid the storms unless you uphold us. Come and fold us in your peace, O Christ our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one God forever. Amen. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Phoebe, our bishop, Dorothy, our priest. Lord, in all of life, you provide for us, you feed us, you support us, you love us, you fill us with the glory of your presence. Lord, as we have greatly received, may we share with others. May we share the good news and share our prosperity. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. Lord, we pray for all who are without resources for homes where there is hunger and poverty, for those who live in food deserts, for places where people suffer from malnutrition. We pray that your children's needs for proper nutrition may be met and that we all will be good stewards of our many and vast resources. We pray for Joe, our president, the Congress, all state and local legislators, all judges, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. Creator God, as you help us all to be mindful of the needs of those who hunger, we ask your blessing on all those who farm and fish and those who transport, distribute, market, and sell our food that we may be fed. We celebrate with those observing birthdays or anniversaries this week. Lord, you open your hands and you meet our needs. We pray for all who are storm-tossed at this time, for all who are fearful, anxious, or struggling to survive, for all people who are greatly in debt, for those who have had homes or possessions repossessed, for those who are ill, for all who care for loved ones. We pray especially for Sylvia, Ronald, Elizabeth, Kimbrough, Renee, Allison, Lorene, Marianne and Bill, Laura, Rachel, Claire, Robin, Philip, Jay, Patty, Brian, Joan, Karen, Jim, Ann, Billy, Margaret, Beth, Aaron, Adrian, Bill, Joy, 
Ashley, Danny, Mary, Sarah, Bailey, Anne, Imogene, Captain Betty, Wendy, Rebecca, John, John and Vicky, Ronnie, Banks, Georgia, Brown, Denise, Madison and the Martin family, Janet and Van, Barbara, Mary, George, Jeremiah, Roy, Cynthia, Carol, Pete and the Western family, Belinda, Randy, Ty, Joyce, Catherine and family, the Taurus family, Howard, the Iscategui family, Harry, Kate, Hartley, Lewis, Greg, Jasper, Linda, Ava, Don, Marcia, Hub and Jan Miller and family, Emma and the Haddon family, Elmer, Peggy, Joy, Paul, Owen, Lynn, Connie, Christine and the Pastor and Myers families, Miriam, the Weed and Massey families, Sid, Bob Fetzna and family, Joanna, Betty Louise, Nancy, Deb Martin and family, Bertie Barker and family, Barbara, Shirley, Lorraine, Albert, the Marquis and Anderson families. We pray for all who suffer from fractured and broken relationships, for all who have been affected in many ways by COVID-19 throughout the world, for those who face danger and oppression, for all those affected by natural disasters in our country and throughout our world, for our neighbors who grieve and mourn those whose lives are lost in violence and mass shootings, for those grieving the loss of loved ones following the collapse of the condominium in Surfside, Florida, the people of Haiti. Lord, you open your hands. And you meet our needs. We remember all who have gone beyond the storms of life and are now at peace in your eternal presence. We pray for friends and loved ones departed, especially our brother in Christ, the Reverend James Marquis. Lord, you open your hands. And you meet our needs. Almighty and most merciful God, we thank you for your goodness in providing your life-sustaining bounty for us. We remember before you this day all persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the aging and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. As your son brought healing of body, mind, and spirit to the throngs who sought him, help us who are strengthened and empowered by your love to bring comfort to those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the, the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may be seated. What follows next in our service is the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. 
a time at which we gather at this table to nourish our bodies and souls with the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are invited to join us at this table and to partake in this heavenly feast as we strengthen ourselves for service in God's world today and in all the days to come. We walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which has been shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace make you complete in everything good, that you may do what is God's will and what is pleasing in God's sight. May the God of grace strengthen your inner being through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may be renewed for service in God's world. May the God of love fill your hearts with the love of Christ, that you may share that love with one another and with all of God's people. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forever. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.